All right. Thanks everyone for joining tonight. Um, I have the pleasure of um, having Glenn talking tonight about how he's using Image AI, which is a high-level Python library for object detection and classification um, that, according to him, makes it extremely easy to apply deep learning models to real world problems. And initially, we had thought of actually having um, a live demo of a DJI drone, um, but due to COVID, um, I decided to against having um, in-person meetings because our meeting room is, is rather small, not terribly well ventilated, and yeah, social distancing doesn't really happen in there. Anyways, um, so Glenn was great and decided just to show what you can actually do if you had a DJI drone and that actually sort of like recorded videos and what you can then basically do with that library. Without much further ado, Glenn, it's all yours. All right, thank you, Peter. So, okay, as well, actually, Peter, you've actually made that pretty comprehensive introduction to me, so that, so that cuts out my intro, um, but at risk of uh, repeating, Peter. So, um, in context, I have been um, playing around fairly seriously at times with uh, controlling drones um, as, as in quadcopters, um, in, in a completely automated way. And once it's recording all the video, going on its flight plan, records all the video, heads back again. Um, and then the ground station that's controlling it needs to do something with that video. I need it not just to be recording things, but to actually be able to give me meaningful information. So then I can make another actual decision and send the drone to go do something else based on that information. Um, in the early days, okay, so that's, the, uh, that's my context to that project. Now, it's left me to have to learn a, a many different technologies. Um, object recognition uh, was certainly, uh, object detection classification, uh, properly called, uh, was certainly one of the uh, more difficult ones to get, actually get functioning. So, now, I'm assuming everyone's familiar with the idea with uh, object detection. I know Peter is going to, yeah, I'm not going to try and challenge anything he says. Okay, so on uh, the simpler level, since this is a high level language, which is a high level library, which I definitely like, it detects objects such as cars, trees, cats in an, uh, in an image. Now, it uses pre-trained neural nets, or I use pre-trained neural nets, um, mostly because I don't have a lot of time to wait uh, for training up my own uh, context, um, you, you know, my own actual neural nets based on thousands of, well, actually, it seems like tens of thousands of uh, pictures. Um, it's worth noting, it'll come, it'll turn up uh, near the end of this presentation. It's a massively parallel problem. Um, yeah, uh, it, in, performance improvements seem to mostly be around getting more cores to do the job as much as possible, as much as you possibly can. Right, now, for example, on that one, we find uh, often, well, so <laughs> I would say, Almost all uh, object detection now is done on the GPU. It can de decompress an image or a video frame uh, rapidly and run the detection over it. I've noted that there are two actual points, or par parts it seems to this. Internally, the video card actually does uh, change the image or, change, or renders the actual frame for itself. So it actually has um, a, effectively a raw image to work on. I'm not entirely sure about how it functions, but that's part of the effect of having guess, a high level library. Um, the new image um, and or video often produces, uh, so often, hmm, yes, uh, often produces bounding boxes around identified objects. That's where you can get very uh, cute looking videos where you've got boxes around every identified objects all running in real time. And you can see that you know you can see lots and lots of activities of traffic and cars running around. That's not what I'm actually after as uh, as part of this, but you often see it like that single image. Typically, what is identified, what class is identified as, and the percentage, how sure it is. Um, the percentage I felt at times has been quite. Um, Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Quite, um, oh, sorry, uh, misleading. 
because I see it often um, successfully detecting uh, uh, people or events or objects at like 50 percent and it, it seems to be rapidly doing it all the time successfully even though it's only 50 percent sure um, so I'm not actually sure what they base the percentages on in that respect because they uh, the accuracy seems quite high now yeah, um, and it Ah, oh, this was going to be a Reddit video, but since I've had to upload the presentation, you won't get to see the wonderful, the wonderful rendered video here. Okay, shame about that. Right. So that's the sort of thing that is often created from these libraries. Now, Python options for machine learning. Okay, Python isn't a first choice for object detection, as it's simply slow. Um, the performance of scene here uh, between using uh, non-Python options and Python options has been pretty, it's potentially order of magnitude. However, useful libraries do exist. There's the TensorFlow machine learning using, I believe now, the Curious Neural Net API. So that's basically just what um, uh, the high level library is using. Uh, fortunately, that supports the NVIDIA GPU. Uh, I've also come across PyTorch, um, so that seemed to do, it's able to do its own uh, machine learning as well as um, uh, detection. So again, supports NVIDIA. Okay, and for, then there's the image, the, uh, the, the image and video formats. Um, although, rent, although doing the object detection can be done um, by the other two libraries, OpenCV seems to be the common library used for actually manipulating the image itself. So whether that's in um, uh, video or whether it's in rendering uh, still images. Fortunately, that has AMD as well as uh, NVIDIA support. Now, I started looking at Darknet to start off with because it uses uh, the CUDA Deep Neural Net Library written in C and CUDA. Um, it's fast, 1080p, H.264, 30 frames per second, and I'm getting 15 frames per second detection, right? So it's half real time, so it's still pretty good. And that's with a, a GTX 1050 uh, uh, Ti. So it's not a very, it's a like two generations ago uh, video card. So it's quick, <laughs> okay? Uh, I haven't had the chance to run it on like a Titan 5 or even better a Titan X. I'm pretty sure you could do better than real time on those. It's it's fast, it's well maintained, it's forking fairly often. A lot of um, very interested people uh, producing a lot of uh, it, producing their own uh, additions to it. Um, it can be called by Python wrappers. Some people have put that in. However, the output is hard to use. Unformatted detection, standard out output. The only JSON support I've found on one of the forks is it literally uh, Darknet spins up an HTTP server locally, and you actually have to use. Uh, well, I, I created a um, a method where I started up a requests uh, sub process that would uh, constantly uh, poll the uh, HTTP server locally, just so I could get out the JSON data. It's JSON data because that's a great way to deal with um, uh, th with the audit um, uh, detections. So. <laughs> it says start a via process, create a thread. Yep, okay. So not very clean. And I was only able to get six frames per second when I was doing it like that, right? So it cost me half my speed just to get that done. So I thought I might as well just go for convenient JSON because that's what I'm after. Image AI itself, very high level, very simple, very Pythonic. Um, <laughs> one, oops, I'm not sure where I actually got that value from, God, sorry, I just put real, one frame per second with TensorFlow with GPU, no, that should have been with, um, ah, oh, that's right, yep, so not very quick, um, sorry, I actually, do, I'm not entirely sure, I might have, uh, mistyped that, um, yeah, that benchmark, okay, so, you can see from the code itself, this is just from one of the standard examples. So, oh, very good documentation to get you started, by the way. It's another nice thing about it. 
All you need to do is import it, the right library, grab the OS, all here, is it here? You're just starting up an instance of image classification. Then you set its um, uh, model. The model I'm using is uh, ResNet 50. That's simply a, tra a pre-existing trained model that I download. So it saves me having to do my own. You can also, it can also support uh, YOLO and uh, there's another one there as well. So there's nice common uh, training models. Just need to link it up, tell it where the model uh, file is, and then load it up. You've now got a working image classifier. It's, it's that simple. It takes about one second to actually uh, load that up. Very simple Python at this point, predictions and probability. So what it is and how likely it is, is returned. You just run it through, you can think that's easy enough to understand. There's the image that it's loading. Give me no more than five results. I don't want all the uh, all the very low ones, and then simply print uh, print them out for each prediction, each probability. Zip those together um, for a tuple. Yes, okay, and then print out for each, and then let's give that a go now. Now I'll just try to get my terminal up. Just remind me. There it is. Okay, so. All right, actually, I'm probably a step ahead. I might demonstrate that right now. I should keep up with the pace of my, this thing. There, so let's give it a shot. I've got laptop, i5, G7, 16 gig of RAM, SSD, NVIDIA 1050 four, with a four gig. All right, now I'm using Python 3. The docs all seem to be Python 2, not entirely sure why that is. I'm using the common objects. Is it common objects in context or I forget for what COCO stands for? Basically, it's a, um, a huge uh, repository of images which have uh, had identified in them what's actually in the picture. And this is used for training your neural nets. Uh, downloaded with a great little program called 51.zoo that actually allows you to download a wide range of um, uh, neural net training images. At, uh, there's a number of repositories that support. So I just grabbed Coco 21.7. That's about 5,000 images. And I'm using the ResNet for uh, trained model. So now we'll go on the installation. Now I share it. Yeah, it does take a little bit to do this. Okay. okay, now instructions are there. First of all, Right, C E and WP. Got my demo. Okay. Yeah. Create the environment. E -E -B, and let's call that environment one. Okay, that's my virtual environment created. Source. Activate. Okay, now I'm in the virtual environment. So I've made a few changes to my own first prediction. Right. Okay, hope everyone can see that okay. Once again, importing. Right. But instead of a single picture, I've got a directory coco slash data that contains 5,000 images. So rather than just IDing the same one a thousand times. Okay. Got my results dictionary, a counter, and the maximum number of images because it does still take quite a while to actually uh, check that number of images. Okay. There's my timing for the load. I already covered that before. It loads up the model, gets it ready to go. Load time, 
and that's so that's how I know how long it takes to load up that um, that model. All right, there's the detection start time, and here is where I get the list of the uh, JPEGs I'm going to actually detect up to value max in the array, and then list, and then there's my counter plus equals one. Print the count so it gets an idea what what, what point I'm at, and the only this is where the magic happens. Click so prediction dot classify, and then I'll just join up the data path what I have above the image, and again the the max number of images. The, sorry, I uh, detects I want from it. Okay, then I've just added that into the um, sorry uh, into the results list uh, dictionary. All right, then after that my detection time and printing out the results. And then a bit of data at the end, how long it took to load, detect time, and the average detections per second. Right, that is about it. Now, if I run it, of course, first thing that's gonna happen, I'm gonna do lots of typos. Right, nothing, no image AI. So, the installation installed TensorFlow. Remembering TensorFlow does the actual um, object detection. And that's a nearly 400 meg archive. They see our big TensorFlow is. Okay. Next is a whole bunch of extra libraries, Curious, which of course, um, if I understand it right, so Curious is, can be used to build, uh, to, to train uh, neural nets. I'm not at that point yet. Interestingly enough, NumPy is actually set. I believe we had a bit of a talk earlier about NumPy needing to be set, and it's quite specific about the vast majority of the actual uh, libraries. Um, the only one it seems to actually trust is OpenCV Python. Everything else is set, but at least it makes it predictable. Interesting enough, because OpenCV in the past has broken some bits for me as well. <laughs> <laughs> There's always fun in games. You upgrade and all of a sudden nothing works. Yeah, yeah Care is a sort of like... Um, a higher level API for TensorFlow to use. So it's okay. funny that Image AI is another higher level API sitting on top of Keras. Okay, I got you. All right. <laughs> um, now, let me see. And then finally, install Image AI, Image AI itself. Latest version. And hopefully, this is going to produce a result now. Right, so it's past the load. That's my simple counter. There we go. You can see, for example, here, this is the name of the JPEG. There's a recreational vehicle, 50%, mobile home, 12%, truck and trailer, moving van, and a freight car. Now, I will try and share No. Let's see whether it's right. Ah, actually, let's do that one. Okay. And then I'll try to share this, the I've known.
Okay, so talked about a refrigerator and a wardrobe. Hmm, cupboards. Oh yeah. Is the cupboard here? It might have identified the cupboard here, it might have identified as a wardrobe on the right. Um, what else has it got? It's got a medicine chest. Not sure where that one would have come from. And then a ch uh, apparently there's a church in there. It's got a 6% chance, so it's clearly not very confident about it. Um, so, so you get into that sort of stuff. Okay, so that's the first attempt at object detection. All right. If I may chime in, you're actually doing image classification where the whole image is classified as a thing. Okay. So um, it tries any so it assumes this is something there's a single object in there that you want to detect and that's what it outputs what's most likely the case right so object so your object saying... detection finds objects within the image image classification itself takes the whole image and what is this okay all right <laughs> let me see then okay so that's the first example Let's move on. Oh, actually, at this point, any questions? Okay, cool. Simple object detection. Ah, so that's the summary of what you do. Set the model, load up the model, predictions, returns, so the predict, predicts, uh, produces the predictions and probabilities over 5,000 images, no GPU. Now, I'm going to give a shot of actually doing the GPU. So I just inst uh, installed CUDA onto this machine. So I'm not entirely sure it's going to work. But even if it fails abysmally, it should give an idea. Ah, I want to note back in here. So the number of detections per second we've got is about eight per second. Right. So. I'm going to uninstall TensorFlow. And then install TensorFlow GPU. Okay. Now, let's see how we go. Fingers crossed. Successfully loaded. There we go. Now it's just blast through them. I think I've got something wrong with my math. Average detections per second is exactly the same. I might just check my math. I think clearly that went through pretty quickly. Okay, what have we got? Hmm. Oh, max divided by detect time. Oh, that should be that should be right. Max is the number of images. Second, hmm. Okay. So in fact, according to that, there's actually no speed improvement. So what I'll do 
perhaps. Right through less, then have a look what's going on. Sound device. It's got here. It seems to be falling back on the CPU because it's yeah. telling you the CPU frequency. Oh, and then of course it goes to standard I. Okay. Yep. Ah, could not load dynamic uh, libq. So okay, so it requires CDUNN. That's the CUDA. I don't have that installed. Which is the CUDA neural net. Okay, so I won't fight against that now. Right, that is simple image detection on a hundred images. Okay, on to the next is very commonly used for video. Right, the test data actually for this one comes from my own phone. I um, grabbed a mount, um, started recording my, on my phone while I was driving around um, in, in the countryside. Um, so it gives a 2.7 gigabytes um, uh, file. Okay. Uh, H.264, very high quality, and of course, detection is insanely slow. So I will go back to All right now, yeah, example two. Here we go video detection. Quite a lot more complicated because there's more things you want to be able to do. On this, important things, right. There's, you'll note the color index, which is different. So this is for the bounding boxes around the uh, around so you get an idea you can actually say what color each is going to be well each object that you're expecting so raspberries are going to be for horses maroons for cats orchids are going to be sorry cats going to be orchid i should say and a boat is going to be blue slate so that's the, so you can highly customize it now the difference is things like this. Because it's a video, it's very likely that you want to have information uh, coming out live. You want to better see it quickly. Or maybe you want to better store the information. So if you want to do anything at all, there's the per second. Frame number as it goes through. Ah, this is called by the other function. So you pass in the four second. Okay, uh, output arrays, count arrays, average count. Return frame. Okay, that's the one I most know about. And then return something you've done at the end of it. Okay. Um, not to go into much about this. It's very much, as I said, high level. It functions pretty much by itself. Count through. Labels. Adds in the colors. If resized equals false. Uh, it's using pit for okay for management resizes it okay where's the important um there's the title and i believe the end result is in the return frame so that should actually hmm. sorry just give me a sec on that that's not how i used my one Uh, that's right. And so that will actually create um, every second a image that you can, so a, uh, what do I call it? It creates a picture um, showing um, the current uh, detection. So every one second, that means one second of video time, it will actually show you a small window that, um, come, that comes up. So I believe I actually turned that off in the end because it just got in my way. <laughs> So there's also though uh, there's per se there's four second there's per frame there's uh, a start and an end uh, function that you can put in and on right end effect the frame there it is yep per function function 
equals four second. Okay, I've set the probability to only 50%. Okay, and log the progress. And a lot of other boilerplate. So I'm gonna go to my first one. All right, just realized I'm still another virtual environment. Was it to get out of a virtual environment? Deactivate. Deactivate. Source it? No, I just called deactivate, I think. I actually never really source things. I just use the absolute path into a virtual environments, makes it easier, then you don't have to deactivate. <laughs> <laughs> just just deactivate okay I just don't type think... deactivate and enter oh, no 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 don't deactivate and that's it deactivate no deactivate no d t or whatever that is oh sorry typos De yep try that ah, there you go thanks for that right Okay. Well, so I need to get a new one. Okay. You're doing that with outside your virtual environment you have to source first yeah i, I just realized two then activate there we go sweet Okay. And image AI. Cool. So. Now you get an idea of the speed. So detecting the large video seems to work at about one, is it, uh, one frame every five seconds. So very, very slow on the CPU. Uh, if I'm correct, I'll show you there. And the CPU, I didn't show on the images actually, on the image example, the CPU seems to be much more poorly uh, actually utilized. Uh, when doing just images, then I can reach up to 400% CPU usage. Uh, here I'm struggling to hit 120%. So it clearly does things quite differently for the video. All right, now you have to trust me when you do actually do this with uh, CUDA and CDUNN uh, properly installed, once again, you can get at least, you know, maybe about uh, about six or seven or eight um, uh, frames per second. And so the difference is, is, is huge. All right. So go back to here. Yeah. So other than that, it's barely making any impact. However, and getting out of it's always fun. Okay. So... However, I might be able to show you. Okay, 
There's just enough to show you what it does. So back to the image, I'll share. Okay, now that's the video. I'm not sure how it's going to stream. Okay, you can pick up about half a second of that. So it's identifying airplanes. I believe it actually identifies my dashboard as an airplane wing. Even it says actually quite certain about it. So it makes me very wondering about whether I, so it makes me ensure I don't make any desperate decisions with this. I'm hoping the Tesla vehicles do a better job than me. Otherwise, they're going to be constantly ducking airplanes. Okay, so that's that one. So there it is, 0.2 frames per second. Now I decided I want to try and increase that, not even actually switching GPUs, as it to a GPU. So I thought about using Handbrake to, uh, to pre-process it into another format, figuring a smaller image, uh, a smaller video would be much easier. So I moved on to using Handbrake, to, to, um, I used Handbrake to fast, H.264, uh, 1040p, 30 frames per second. That reduced it down to 260 meg. So I would kind of assume I'd get 10 times the performance. And I still get exactly the same speed, almost no change whatsoever. So something is happening inside this process. I haven't been, have been, been able to work out. I then thought, okay, clearly the number of frames per second, and although this does make a substantial improvement. It's six times faster to generate one second. I'm still generating the same number. So, of course, no particular bait. It's a nice improvement, but I'm, I'm getting um, still fairly slow uh, processing. Um, I dropped it down to MPEG-4, <laughs> okay, and thought, okay, 288p, five frames per second. And I haven't actually tried that yet, so I thought I'd give it a go now. I just finished doing it before we started. So, my guess is it will be 0.2 frames per second. <laughs> and then I hope to pick your brains at the end of this, and you can tell me why. I have an inkling. That'll do. We'll just confirm. Right. That's number three. Two, three. That's a one. <laughs> yep. Just as slow even maybe a little bit slower. Right. I'm going to ask you a question here, Peter. What's the theory? What's going on? Well, you had a function that you were supplying per second. So yeah. I think it only does every second in the video. It does an object detection. It grabs the frame, does something with it. And in your case, it also can display it. So it actually only processes every second something. and doesn't matter how many frames you have it only looks every second if you have 120 frames it only grabs every 120th frame if it has five frames per second it just grabs every fifth frame very good yep now let's and test that no it's yep, yep. return yep. the per frame Fun zip, remove the per, per frame function. The frames per second is five. No change. Yeah, I'm not sure what the default is. If by default it only looks every second. Oh, by default it, uh, it will not call anything. No, no, but it might be the default. It only looks every second at a frame to do something. Mm. That might be sort of like somewhere in the documentation yeah. hidden. All right. So, so all the other things with displaying something doesn't take much CPU. 
it's the object detection itself that's actually really, really expensive. Still not going to quit on me. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Well, sometimes you have to kill it. Yeah, I know, got it. <sighs> Or usually does it <laughs> right okay then so that wasn't so great now um let's go back right now i was going to do another comparison with its uh, cuda gpu again machine isn't set up pro quite properly on that and so don't have to force you guys to watch it um now the benefit from pre-processing question mark it seems to be non-existent uh at the moment i can't that is better pointed out i mean there's something going on there that says no you can't go any faster um however i'd come up okay some thoughts about the improvements a parallel problem well that's a clearly an easy one uh, Kubernetes-based uh, server farm is ba almost the first thing that I think of when I look at something like this. Um, break up, uh, oh, sorry, um, if I recall the protocol correctly, there are keyframes in most video formats. And the keyframes are basically a frame which um, is, fully, is, is fully rendered. And every fr uh, anything that's not a keyframe actually is simply uh, uh, the differences between it and the previous frame. So when you're watching video, you're actually watching um, the picture being, uh, being built up out of changes. You can cut on the keyframe uh, quite cheaply, even on a CPU. Therefore, you can cut up a large video into its, into its various um, chunks, probably about uh, up to 10 seconds long, and then it can go into a highly parallelized uh, server farm. Uh, GPU accelerations, obviously also a big one. All right, now I've also got the idea, best format for storing playing video may not be the best for object detection. Um, I'm going to have to continue to investigate that. I'm not sure what, again, is limiting, is limiting it. Um, so I don't really have an answer for that. As it says right at the beginning, this is my investigations into trying to get this working. However, I've come to the conclusion that potentially that by far the best way of getting this up and running quickly and easily uh, and, and most efficiently is the knowledge that a reality pictures, uh, videos, don't actually change that much in what they actually have in them um, between one second and the next, and the next, you know, reality generally stands still with only with only a few things moving around you. Um, because of that, and you see the speed and efficiency you can get out of simply um, uh, doing the, the image detection on a on a folder of images, then might as well just run it on that. And so that's actually my conclusion of it don't do if you're after a good idea about what's actually in the in the um, in the video spend your time pre-processing it ripping out or uh, ripping out every uh one or two seconds or uh, one or, like once or twice a second a jpeg and then do your uh, your object detection on the jpeg so oh. right <laughs> I'm really not sure how much I managed to get uh, get get over and all of that. I don't do many of these. So that's all right. First of all, thanks, Glenn. <laughs> I hope I haven't put too many asleep. Um, no, no. It just shows the pain and suffering that you have when you're dealing with deep learning. <laughs> I've been there, done that too many times. <laughs> it's it, it's it's clearly if you want to get. Um, uh, 
yeah, you want to get this kind of detection um, actually working. Image AI is a, is a is just a few lines of Python and you're away. Mm. It's so, it's very very easy to get up and running. There's no getting around it. There's clearly some underlying gotchas on the video about why it's always so slow. I haven't worked that one out yet. And as it turns out, if you do actually get CUDA right, with and, and uh, CUD uh, CUD uh, installed properly, then you can get big performance improvements. I mean, you could, since we still have time, I mean, you could just go down to the terminal, install QDNN and see what happens. Right. <laughs> and leave the terminal open so we see what happens. Uh, ready for disaster. Always. Okay, let's pull it up. So... Just going to pick up, pull up my um, synaptic. Look, okay, that could be it. Just going to have a look. Right. So, um, We just want more library. Excellent. Fingers crossed. Of course, it's CUDA. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting enough, while this is downloading, um, the Image IA project is actually going, is actually switching over to, uh, to using uh, PyTorch uh, as of last month. So yeah, I'm surprised. Development over to it. Why do you say that? <laughs> because TensorFlow is a pain. I mean, PyTorch isn't great either, but um, I mean, TensorFlow only became manageable because of Keras. So people use Keras right. because it's easier to use, and um, PyTorch just seems to be a better performance. Okay. That's what I've noticed with some projects. So it didn't need a wrapper to start off with, and it performs better. Yeah, I mean, TensorFlow itself, compared to PyTorch, seems to be in something slower and whatnot. Um, right. And, yeah, between TensorFlow 1 and 2, there were massive breaks in the code. Oh, yeah. Uh, it wasn't too much fun. So, yeah. And, yeah, I mean, Google is TensorFlow and... Facebook does PyTorch, so. I mean, I started out with TensorFlow as well, because they had an object detection API, but that was quite hard to get up and going. And some other PyTorch-based projects seemed a bit more uh, better software and software engineering. <laughs> Okay, let's see how that goes. Loaded dynamic library. It's still the same. Can you just scroll up and see whether it's still using the CPU? Yeah. Picked Can we do a pip freeze? CPU frequency, but it is actually successful. Uh, make sure libraries. And so probably if you. Okay. I see there it's actually. No, no. Can you do a pip freeze in your environment? Sure. What does that achieve? <laughs> I just want to see what libraries are actually installed in your environment. 
Uh, no, TensorFlow GPU. Mm -hmm. And Ang Angus is posting in the chat that libq solver is not found. But yeah, it might not actually be a problem, but if you scroll up again, the TensorFlow. Uh, I just check that out. Successfully, could not find low dynamic Q solver. Could not. Oh, yep. Others have had the problem. That could be that. Is it cube blast or oh, cube soul? Or is it? Looks like some people had to add um, CUDA, uh, the CUDA path to the LD library path. Do that. Also, That looks different. It does. Here you go. And it's slower. Seconds. <laughs> it's <laughs> slower. There we go. I think the no the problem is that um, you have now that you have to shove an image, a small image, onto the GPU, do something, and then get something back. Exactly. Um, if you do the object detection now, you will notice it's probably going to be a lot faster because there's going to be a lot more processing happening on the GPU. Yep. It's yeah, your bus it. that's the problem that's not wide enough to shove a lot of images across or fast enough. So now if I go to... Now I'm back onto the video. Hopefully this should make a significant difference. All right. Um, and the one thing that you learn with deep learning is patience, which is really weird because it's supposed to do everything for us really quickly <laughs> um, yeah maybe <laughs> okay so let's try okay that's got it Qblast needs installing. I think that's where the problem still is. Let's just check NVIDIA SMI using 22%, 18%. So it's, it is it is on the CPU. Yeah, but Qblast is not there and that um, yep. might be a problem.
Thanks you. Here we go. I'll also go to the one that I can. Right, so. Was it libqblas? The some well, yes. Well, it's from Cuda, so I'm not quite sure what the um. Where was it? Um, uh, created. No, it's mainly with the error messages down here that you qblas status not there initialized. There, there it is. Yep. Okay, so it needs to be. 11.4 installed. And that's something new. I didn't know that you could just pass the library name and it finds it what package it is in. That oh, was already installed, is it? Mm. Yes, it's already installed. Mm. The only thought is to throw in a reboot in here, but yeah. Mm. So, no one, per so it definitely went on to the. Mm. You can see it definitely goes onto the GPU. I mean, from personal experience, it's usually like at least a factor of 20 that it's faster. Yeah, 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 hugely. So mm, it's a bit strange. Yeah, we get to see that is. Okay, smoke and mirrors, but oops. it is actually, as you can see, running on the GPU. Mm. Wait a minute. Nope. It's not a base. Yet yeah, process down there, taking up nearly four mm. gig of RAM. But it's yeah. not really utilizing it a, much, a lot. <laughs> no, it's not. That's insanely slow. Mm. Okay, so. I guess the conclusion is, unless we can get that to work, um, mm. now. I mean, four gigs should be enough for ResNet 50. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, well. That's right. just another so, lesson learned. It's then figuring out why the hell is it not working properly. <laughs> and as you say, that seems to have been a lot of the actual lessons uh, yeah. also, even with image AI. It does yeah. get, again, it's an easy library to get things just up and running, but it doesn't seem to hide you from all of that uh, underlying complexity if you want it up and running quickly. Mm. I mean, there's still problems if, if something with CUDA is bung at the high level API won't save you from that. Exactly. Unfortunately. Yes, but there's yeah. no getting around that. Um, mm. Though I would say that its outputs seem to be a bit more useful than others I've seen. Yeah, no, I like sort of like it's it's nice and clean code, so that's great. That really yeah. made it easy. Because I've been writing wrappers around and whatnot for other libraries, and it's usually massive amounts of. Um, Tensors that need converting and grabbing stuff from there and then doing things and it's terrible. But that's why you dockerize and you never use it again. <laughs> you don't have to look at the code. There we go. There is a ah, Kublas status not initiated. Yeah. Um, um, so Ah, okay. This can actually be solved in TensorFlow, that particular problem. Yeah, TensorFlow itself can actually fix whatever or whatever's going on there. Okay. Right. All right. Well, that's about it, I guess. I'm not sure I can really add too much to that, unless anyone wants to um, throw anything else my way. Yeah, it's Ian here, Peter. Um, yeah. oh, sorry, uh, Glenn. Yeah, Hello. thanks very much for the presentation. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm not alone. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I can turn the camera on even, and you can look at me. I suppose. Even better. Um, 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 I was going to say, 
Yeah, sorry I'm late. I actually, you know, went down to MSG, MS4G02, and I can assure you the lights are out and the building's locked. But um, So I, that's why I was a bit late joining. Um, not so much to do with what your code and all that's doing, um, all the tensile flow and stuff, but um, I think it was in, is it firstprediction.py? Yes. Or... or um, yeah, you're using a Python statement, which is like for each item in average count. Is that right? You, you edited a, one of the files you edited. Yep, I know. Just a minute. I'll bring it up. Yeah. Actually, it doesn't. I'm still stuck with that zero to 63. It's not um, It's not updating your, um, you all have got a, a, a heap. The last line is a whole lot of control C's. It's not oh. refreshing. A whole lot of control C's. It's update. It's fine on mine. Hmm. On this? Yeah. That, you, you, your main's, oh, okay. Now, it's been like that for me for about five minutes now. Oh, really? No. Yeah. That, that must be the, okay, that must be the, um, uh, the video uh, operating software. Oh, I have no idea. Seems fine on my end. Yeah. Anyone else having that sort of problem? Nope. Ian might be just logging in again and see whether he can see something then. <laughs> Have you turned it off and on again? Yep. Okay, I'm back. Oh. Yeah. Ah. Can you see yeah, something now? Yeah, I can. That's good. Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, hmm. uh, maybe not that one. Maybe that that was the first one you showed us, wasn't it? Oh, you're talking oh. about you, okay. I got you. Um. Uh, yeah. So each item I, I see is one word. I thought it was for each space item. I was thinking you were using oh, each right. as being a um, a keyword in um, Python. So I was, gotcha. uh, yeah, I was thinking, oh, I've, I've never heard of that. <laughs> so okay, it, it um, it's just your way of each item as a as a, a, yep. a variable. Yeah, okay. I guess one of the things that I w you've also got counter equals zero, and then you increment your counter. But I don't see you using the counter in that bit of code. No, it might have been no, just a cut and paste from somewhere else. But, um, partly that, and also um, I, I, I tend to clean out the print statement, but, but uh, the, out of my code uh, when I'm actually trying to show show it to someone. Oh, you know, okay. Yeah, throwing yeah. It, unless it's useful, I'll try to actually do a little bit of clean up. But this yeah. one was um, it wasn't quite cut and paste. I actually had to debug the thing to get it to work, but um, mm. it did in the end. Yeah, because normally if I want a counter, I'll go for index, comma, each item in enumerate, um, parent, left parenthesis, average count, right parenthesis, colon. Right. And yeah, then, I, yeah. then I don't need the counter equals zero or the counter plus one because yeah. enumerate just increments each time it goes through the loop. So, yep. you know, that's that, just a little that, shortcut. That, that's my Pascal history. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> We all show our <laughs> roots. <laughs> yeah, <somewhere. laughs> yeah. Okay, no, I'm, I'm not so confused now. Yeah, I, was, I was thought you had to come up with a new uh, bit of Python code that I hadn't heard of before. Yeah. Quite, quite the opposite. I'm learning my Python code when I turn up to these things. <laughs> That's Very good. good. All yeah. right, thanks, mate. Cool. Yeah, awesome. good one. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, thanks. All right. Any more questions? Can also be in the chat. No? Okay. In that case, thanks again, Glenn. And, uh, oh, Angus is typing. Ah. Ah, okay, cool. No question. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, no, <laughs> not, 
the best thing about presentations is uh, if something doesn't quite work and you can actually see how someone solves it. Like for instance, certain things weren't installed. So yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe it's also, maybe TensorFlow doesn't like your GPU. <laughs> it's not difficult. Again, that's a really serious yeah. problem with, uh, oh, wait a minute. Okay, I've got a thought. I'll probably have to install um, uh, an earlier version of CUDA, currently we're up to 11.4. But but the uh, TensorFlow was, was locked at version 2.4, which I think is a little bit old. The, and it's CUDA will never... New. should be all right. But because but maybe... you know, CUDA uh, does not tolerate um, differences in versions very well. Yeah. I mean, maybe 10.2 or something might work. Yeah. Yeah, mm. exactly. Uh, funnily enough, that was actually the um, previously when I was uh, mucking around with um, Image AI, mm. I was actually using the, the 10.2 uh, uh, mm. uh, uh, CUDA to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then. Quite possible, okay. yeah. Okay, well, again, thank you. Well, and, something uh, um, to burn the midnight oil after you close the presentation here and see whether it works with 10.2. <laughs> all right, we'll give it a crack. We'll give you an update. Yep, that's all good. Thank you very much, Glenn. Thank you and very much for tuning up. Cool. Yeah.